Hi everyone. In the previous part, we had gone through the first stage of aerobic respiration, that is glycolysis. Now, in this part, we will discuss about the second stage of aerobic respiration, that is citric acid cycle or the TCA cycle, that is tricarboxylic acidic cycle or the Krebs cycle. Okay, so let's have a quick review of aerobic respiration and then we will move in detail about this TCA cycle. So as we know that when molecular oxygen is a terminal act electron acceptor, then that metabolic pathway is known as aerobic respiration. And uh, the cell is going to produce the carbon dioxide, water and as well as the ATP that is nothing but the energy during this aerobic respiration. And this aerobic respiration, as we know, it occurs in three stages, that is glycolysis, that we have already gone in detail about this glycolysis in the previous parts. And in this part, we are going to discuss about the second stage, that is citric acid cycle. Then in the next part, we will discuss about this electron transport chain. Okay, so these are the three stages that uh, we are going to discuss in detail. Now. Coming to the TCA cycle, which we already know that it is going to be the tricarboxylic acidic cycle or citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle. And as we know, in the second phase of respiratory metabolism of glucose, acetyl-CoA that was generated from the uh, even catabolism of fatty acids and proteins also along with the glycolysis process is fed into this TCA cycle that is tricarboxylic acidic cycle and it is going to be resulted in the production of carbon dioxide, water and reduced coenzymes along with some sort of ATP. So this is what happening in the TCA cycle and to enter the TCA cycle the pyruvate that was generated during the glycolysis or protein catabolism or fatty acid metabolism that have to be first converted uh, into a compound called as acetyl CoA, a two carbon compound called as acetyl CoA. For that, what it is going to do? Let's see. So, here, first of all, the pyruvic acid is the end product, pyruvate or pyruvic acid is the end product of glycolysis or glycolytic pathway. So, whatever. Uh, the thing may be this acetyl CoA, either it is coming from the glycolysis or from the protein metabolism or from the fatty acids. So, those are all have to be in the form of acetyl CoA to enter into the Krebs cycle. Now, from the glycolysis, so as we are discussing about the aerobic respiration, from the glycolysis, the last compound end product of the glycolysis is pyruvic acid. Now, this pyruvic acid how to be converted into the acetyl CoA that means it have to be changed into two carbon compound so that two carbon compound is nothing but the acetyl CoA so what is happening the pyruvic acid is a three carbon compound is going to lose its one of its car carbon in the form of carbon dioxide that process is called as decarboxylation now what we'll get after the uh, decarboxylation of pyruvic acid, we will get a compound called as acetic acid. Now this acetic acid combines with a coenzyme called as CoA to form acetyl CoA. And this whole reaction is catalyzed by several enzymes collectively called as pyruvate dehydrogenase. What is it is called as? Pyruvate dehydrogenase is a several enzymes collectively together we call it as pyruvate dehydrogenase. Now during this process two hydrogen atoms are released and are accepted by NAD plus to form NADH plus H plus. So remember uh, how many NADH is going to form here? One. So this pair of hydrogen atoms are released and accepted by NAD plus to form NADH okay and as they move to the electron transport chain we will get three molecules of ATP from each NADH so that's how we can have one NADH is equal to three ATP molecules 
Now this acetyl CoA undergoes a series of changes known as Krupp cycle or TCA cycle. Now this is going to be that means the pyruvic acid oxidation is going to be the link between the glycolysis and the second stage that is TCA cycle. So these are all the reactions that are going to occur in the TCA cycle. So just have a glance of it and then we will come back to it. So this is the overall reaction of our Krupp cycle or TCA cycle or citric acid cycle. So what we have seen here is the pyruvate is going to be converted into acetyl CoA in the presence of pyruvate dehydrogenase removing the carbon dioxide and as I told you the two hydrogen atoms are being released from NAD plus and they are going to be giving rise to the NADH plus H plus isn't it? So this is what we have discussed as a pyruvic acid oxidation step the link between the glycolysis and the TCA cycle. Now here we are going to see of about uh, 1 to 8 or 10 reactions okay that are uh, occurring in the TCA cycle. Now the first step or the first stage is going to be the formation of citrate. So how it is going to form? When a 4 carbon atom called as oxaloacetate or oxaloacetic acid is going to condense with 2 carbon compound acetyl CoA that means here oxaloacetate is there and here acetyl CoA is there. So both two are getting condensed that means water is going to be added okay and now what is going to get obviously you are going to get a compound called as citrate. So the formation of citrate is occurring in the first step or first reaction. So oxaloacetate is going to condense with the two carbon compound that is acetyl CoA. So during this process the coenzyme is being liberated, water is going to be taken out. And the second stage or second type of the reaction is dehydration. What do you mean by dehydration? So removal of the water molecule is going to be considered as dehydration. So here the enzyme is the echonitase. So the citrate molecule is going to be converted into the cis aconitate or isocitrate in the presence of an enzyme called as aconitase. What is it? It is called as aconitase. Okay. So the first reaction formation of citrate. The second is the dehydration step and as well as the hydration step both is going to occur here and we are going to have a, a compound formation called as isocitrate. Now this isocitrate that means is going to remove the hydrogen. So obviously this step is called as dehydrogenation step. Dehydrogenation step. That means removal of hydrogen is occurring. So obviously here NAD plus is going to be converted into NADH plus H plus. And here we are also going to have the liberation of the carbon dioxide and giving rise to the alpha keto glutrate. In some uh, reactions or in some textbooks, this isocitrate was first of all converted into oxalosuccinate and then uh, it is going to be converted into the alpha ketoglutrate. But here it was given as a direct conversion of isocitrate to alpha ketoglutrate, but you can write in any way, it's not wrong. Okay, so the enzyme involved here is isocitrate dehydrogenase. And as well as the decarboxylase enzyme is also involved in the removal of carbon dioxide. And now this alpha ketoglutrate is further getting converted into the succinyl CoA. So what is happening? This alpha ketoglutrate undergoes simultaneous decarboxylation that is a removal of carbon dioxide and dehydrogenation that is uh, evolving the H plus from the NAD and joins with a coenzyme uh, CoA to form succinyl CoA. So here we are going to have the dehydrogenation step, decarboxylation step and there is an addition of CoA enzyme. So that's how from the alpha ketoglutrate we are going to have the formation of succinyl CoA in the presence of an enzyme called as alpha ke uh, ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. Now this alpha keto uh, glutarate dehydrogenase as it converts the succinyl CoA. Now this succinyl CoA is getting phosphorylated that means the phosphorylation step is occurring here. So wherever you get the phosphorylation step there you are going to have the evolution of energy. Okay remember this one. Now this succinyl CoA is going to give rise to the 
GTP by the conversion of GDP into the form of GTP and as we know that one GD, GTP is equal to the one molecule of ATP. In the presence of an enzyme called as succinate thiokinase or succinyl CoA synthetase, anything you can write. So succinyl CoA is going to be converted into the succinate by releasing the CoA enzyme out in the presence of an enzyme succinate thiokinase or succinyl CoA synthetase. In this reaction, one molecule of GDP undergoes phosphorylation that means uh, addition of inorganic phosphate to form GTP. As ATP is formed from GTP by means of an enzyme phosphokinase. Now what we had succinate is there. Now this succinate undergoes dehydrogenation that is oxidation to form fumarate. Okay again fumarate again removal of the hydrogen so here FAD is there. The hydrogen atoms are accepted by flavin adenine dinucleotide to form FADH2. And this one FADH2 is equal to two ATP molecules, whereas one NADH is equal to three ATP molecules. How? We will discuss that in the electron transport chain. Okay. So now the fumarate, whatever uh, we had the synthesis of fumarate in the presence of succinate dehydrogenase enzyme. Now this fumarate is getting hydrated that means addition of water is occurring to form malate the enzyme involved in this reaction is fumarase enzyme okay so the enzyme involved is the fumarase enzyme now this malate is going to convert it to the oxaloestate the starting compound of our citric acid the enzyme that is catalyzing this is again a malate dehydrogenase enzyme which is uh, evolving the hydrogen atoms and are accepted by NAD plus and giving rise to NADH plus H plus. So again this oxaloestate combines with one more molecule of estel CoA and this cycle will continue. So this is all about the Krupp cycle or tricarboxylic acid cycle or the citric acid cycle. So all together we are going to have the eight steps inside the TCA cycle. Okay, I hope so you understood very well. Just have a glance of these reactions as I told you. Estyl CoA plus oxalic acid is going to give rise to the in the presence of citrus synthase. The first compound of the citric acid cycle is citric acid or citrate. That's why this was named this cycle was named as citric acid cycle or tricarboxylic acid cycle and it was studied by Krebs so obviously this is also called as Krebs cycle. Then the citrate is going to be converted into 6 uh, aconitate or directly into the isocitrate by the hydration and dehydration method and then the isocitrate is giving rise to the alpha ketoglutrate so here I have written the two steps separately but uh, in the flow chart it was directly given from the isocitrate to the alpha ketoglutrate both are correct you can write anything. To show the difference, I have mentioned here. Okay, then the dehydrogenation that is alpha ketoglutrate with the coenzyme gives rise to the succinyl CoA, and this succinyl CoA is going to be converted into succinate by the removal of the CoA. Okay, and then the succinate is getting converted to fumarate, and then the fumarate is giving rise to malate. Malate is giving rise to the oxalosuccinate with concerned oxidation rea reduction reactions, decarboxylation mechanisms, dehydrogenation mechanism. So that's all process we have discussed in this cycle. So this is all about the reactions that are occurring in the Krebs cycle. Then overall reaction of the Krebs cycle, so one estyl CoA molecule and three NADP molecules. So you can have here how many are involved. So here one, this is one okay then coming to two so here is two and here is three so how many NAD plus molecules are involved three molecules and then how many FAD plus are involved one and how many GDP are involved one so that is what here the overall reaction is the S1 estyl CoA molecule three NAD plus molecules one FAD plus molecules and one GDP and all together we are going to get Oxaloestate as the final product of TCA cycle and 3NAD is going to give rise to the 3NADH plus H plus that means 3 protons, 1 FADH2, 1 GTP along with that we are going to have the 2 molecules of the carbon dioxide and 1 CoA enzyme is going to be released as the products of this reaction. 
and then why we are supposed to have this TCA cycle what is the significance of the TCA cycle so this TCA cycle is going to be the main source of energy liberation for all biological activities in the living organisms and not only that it is going to supply various or uh, several organic acids necessary for the synthesis of amino acids in protein synthesis okay and it also supplies some reduced cofactors like NADH and NADPH necessary for the synthesis of our proteins amino acids lipids hormones nucleic acids like DNA RNA etc so this is uh, all about the significance of the TCA cycle. So that's how we have finished the TCA cycle that is the second stage of aerobic respiration. The second stage of aerobic respiration is TCA cycle. Okay, thank you.